Good morning. Welcome to St. Margaret of Scotland Catholic Parish. The hymns to this Mass are in your handout, and handouts can be found in the vestibule. If you have a missed letter, the infant's hymn is number 248, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 248.
we come before God grateful for His many gifts. We come thanking Him about our Father for His blessings to us. We come before our Father to His way with sinners. And so we take a moment and acknowledge our, our faults. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of the Virgin, all beings and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but heart the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls, so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. 
Then he leased it to tenant farmers and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his share of the produce. But the tenants seized the servants. One they beat, another they stoned, and another they killed. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the very same way. Finally, he sent his own son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What do you think the owner of the vineyard will do to those tenants when he arrives home? They answered, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him his produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scripture the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce fruit. The gospel of the Lord. Post COVID, I got some blood work and it wasn't good. High <laughs> cholesterol. So I was, I was told that I should exercise vigorously three times a week. That's like a death sentence. <laughs> so I can't do it without any music. So I found something that I love to listen to. It's a concert from 1977 in Oakland, California from Leonard Skinner. <laughs> and right after they sing Sweet Home Alabama, all the thousands of young people who aren't young anymore <laughs> began to scream, Free Bird! Free Bird! So they began to sing Free Bird, and uh, Ronnie Van Zandt says, I'm as free as a bird now. And then the constant reminder or word that he says after that, and oh Lord, you know I can't change. Oh Lord, you know I can't change. It sings it over and over again. Now, not to uh, argue with Ronnie Van Zandt, God rest his soul, he's one of the greatest rock singers ever. It's not that we can't change, it's that we will not to change. The vineyard represents, beloved, God's kingdom, life of God here and life forever in heaven. The Father, of course, is the landowner, and the Son is Jesus. That vineyard was taken away from one group and given to another. Why? Because those who had been working in the vineyard had become what's called hard-hearted. Ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, it's easy for the heart to become hardened because that original sin caused our will to be weakened. Therefore, we are inclined to sin. That does not mean that you and I are wholly evil, but we are inclined to sin, which means we find it more difficult to do the good than to do the bad. Or is it just me? It ain't just me. And so the Lord gives us the grace to live in the vineyard. Let's talk about what grace is is. The gift of grace is defined this way. Grace is the gift of God's life and nature in us. God's nature, so that when we share it, we share God's very life himself. So we are no longer just merely human, but divine. Ladies, you've had children. When they birth, when you birth your babies, did they come out hippotami? That's hippotamuses. They didn't come out, they came out little baby humans. Why? 
because you shared your nature with them, your children do. Now, God just doesn't share his nature by means of his grace. He shares his life. There's nothing more tragic than a woman who dies in childbirth. God dies for us so that we might actually live his life. So therefore, he shares his life and nature with us. There are three kinds of grace. This would be when you want to listen up so that you can live happily in life and go to heaven. Three kinds of grace. First, habitual grace. What is habitual grace? Have you ever heard of habitat for humanity? When they're building habitats, they're building what? Homes. homes. They're building homes. God makes his home in us. We become temples of the Holy Spirit God himself when we are baptized. So that is what it means to share in God's habitual grace. Then God shares with us sacramental grace. Satan loves COVID-19. I told, a lady told me, she said, you had the devil by the tail before you got COVID and he don't like to be held by the tail. But I'm telling you that Satan loves COVID-19 because in our country alone, millions and millions and millions of Roman Catholics are no longer going to Mass since February or March, whenever it was. <clears throat> we can't get any more people in this church right now. There are people in John Paul II. Come over to communion, you over, over there. Come to communion. Let me explain something to you. We can't feed more people in this church right now. We've got those ropes. We cannot share God's life without the sacraments. Roman Catholics need the Eucharist. They shared 900 plates of jambalaya yesterday in our backyard here. And I had plenty of it, and I didn't turn into jambalaya. <laughs> when we receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, we become Jesus. That's why it's essential, not enough to watch the Mass. We become barbaric without the sacraments because we cannot be Jesus without them. Come to communion often, beloved, not just at Sunday. We have Mass Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 8.30, Wednesday at 5.30 in the evening. Come to Holy Eucharist. Be nourished by Jesus in His sacrament of grace. The other sacrament that we can receive often is the sacrament of reconciliation. Now, you can ask God for forgiveness all kinds of ways. I don't doubt He forgives. But if you say, Dear Lord, forgive me, He may forgive you. When you hear the priest say, I absolve you, your sins are forgiven. And that's what's called sacramental grace. That which we celebrate affects a change in us. And that is sacramental grace. Now, the, the th third kind of grace. It's called actual grace. If we are God's habitat, His home, His dwelling, and we receive His sacraments, then he comes to us actually. That is when we need a special favor, grace, help to be charitable, chaste, and merciful, if we're not to kill our husband. <laughs> <laughs> that little grace you need because you share the other graces is yours in abundance. And that's what it means to live in the vineyard as God's children being nourished by God and by his grace. And we can't go to heaven without it. Amen? Amen.
He has sent them into heaven, and is sitting at the right hand of the cross. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and this kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord will give my life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father is very good to us, and confidence we offer our prayers and petition. To be open to God's daily praise, to live in holiness, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the grace to do God's will in our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For an end to the horror of abortion in our country, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For the President and the First Lady, and for all those suffering from the coronavirus, and for the medical personnel caring for them, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends who have died to see the face of God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Pray for the men and women serving us in the armed forces around the world and at home. We pray that God will protect them by his mighty hand. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We offer to the Lord our own prayers and our own silence. Dear Father, hear the prayers we offer. In the name of Jesus, your Son, he lives and reigns with you and dwells with us, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. to the Son, peace.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the most blessed sacrament we have received, so as to be transformed into what we come soon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to those visiting St. Marcus this morning. We're glad that you have come to be with us for Mass. If you've been coming to the area parish while we're moving to the area, please join our parish. Remember, two forms the best of you. Take one, fill it out in the collection. Or you can join our parish online on website for a family to join this week so you were listening. <laughs> there was a few things, that, uh, a great gift to charity, a Holy Family Parish from past Christianity, Mississippi, sent us a great gift and dozens and dozens and dozens of gift cards to various places. And so if you, have, if you yourself have had a loss of any kind or if you want to take one of those gift cards and share it with someone whom you know has had a loss, they're sharing it with us so that we can share them with others. So they're in the best of you on the table as you walk out to the right. Take one, use it yourself because we've had losses or give it to someone you know has had uh, some sort of loss and can use that kind of card. Please take them out for mass. We have uh, adoration to the Most Blessed Sacrament all day on Wednesday. Please sign up for an hour to adore our Savior on the altar. Also, keep in mind every Wednesday we have a Eucharistic healing mass whereby we have devotions to our Blessed Mother before Mass, and then afterwards we have Mass, and I go to each person after the Mass and blessing in the Eucharist, like they do in Lord's France. So we ask God to bless all of us who are sick mentally, especially mentally. <laughs> Men, we're all there. Mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally, come for that special Mass on Wednesday evening at 5.30. Also, dear ones, uh, our, our Bishop will be coming to confirm our young people in 11th and 12th grade. And so he's coming March the 3rd, therefore all of our young people are expected to be at CYO, which is our youth groups, uh, that's from 7th to 12th grade, but the 11th and 12th graders must come this year, 6.30 to 8 every Wednesday evening in the uh, banquet room of the parish center. So 11th and 12th graders, the Archbishop is coming to confirm you March the 3rd of this coming year. The ladies of our parish will have their parish meeting uh, there are ladies St. Margaret meeting in the banquet hall at 9.30 on Tuesday, and then at Wolf Bay Lodge, 6.30 on Tuesday. Um, put this in the bulletin about six months ago, and two of you responded affirmatively, tried to actually do it, but it didn't match. Uh, we have a lady in our parish who's desperately in need of a kidney, and put all of her information in the bulletin, and two of you actually tried that everything you do in a kidney, it all has to match up, and didn't. So if someone else is Considering that by the grace of the Holy Spirit, all the information is in the bulletin that you might need to inquire. Very good. Well, it's very easy to say today. Enjoy the rest of this. Beautiful day. Please stand for the final lesson. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God and his angels and his saints. 